It took me a long time to actually muster up my courage to finally say, you know, and I might say also that it was the very first piece I wrote was setting this poem. And um, I got asked by Nancy Bean, uh, who was, you know, associate concert master of the Philadelphia Orchestra for a long time. Um, she had played a little film score I wrote. I really eased into composing through doing commercial music and little film scores and things like that. I sort of, and I got paid for it. So the practical person said, "Oh, look, you can make money writing music," and that actually justified the whole activity. And Nancy played this little film score and really liked it and said, "Gee, could you write a piece of music for our chamber group?" I think she thought I would write some little, you know, two-minute, three-minute piece, something like that. I got so excited. And I found this poem that was for a singer, and um, I just wrote this piece. I remember when Nancy looked at it, she goes, wow, this is a real piece. <laughs> it's like she wasn't expecting a real piece. And when I wrote that piece, that's when I first said, oh, this is what I want to do when I grow up. So. Excellent. Well, so that brings us back around to this very piece. Mm -hmm. What made you want to revisit this beautiful well, poem? Well, I'm from New England, you know, as I just mentioned. I grew up in Connecticut. And this poem um, really has, it, it's about a man who lived on a farm in Vermont, and here we are in fall, you know, and it captures, I mean, there's these beautiful lines about the, the trees etching their script against the sky and, and, and all that. So I, I just really respond to this poem, which I just sort of read by accident in The New Yorker. And, you know, when the theme of this concert came up about creativity, and all, I, it just seemed like a natural somehow. And I, as I thought when I first wrote this first piece, um, that there were some really good things in it, but you know, I just hadn't had enough experience, I don't think. And it just seemed like a really nice opportunity to sort of revisit this poem um, and and try again, <laughs> you know, and because I really do love the poem. And also, you know, I found that I there were certain things that just felt right to me in my original, particularly in the vocal part, uh, although I've since learned, the, uh, I think, a little bit about writing for voice that I had no idea about the first time. And a singer who really sort of um, protected me from learning in a way because she had almost a freak voice with a freak range. And so, you know... Almost any other singer would have said to me, oh, are, you, are you out of your mind? And, you know, and um, so at any rate, you know, I, I think uh, being able to just come back to it with more experience and also this sort of feeling of like, I, you know, I could hold on to some of the things that I just thought felt just right. And then I could, um, you know, hopefully think a little more clearly about other things. Plus, it was a different set, you know, different uh, medium with the string quartet, which is, of course, a great thing to write for. So Lyric Fest is about song and uh, about the beauty of voices and the power of the human voice to communicate. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about um, writing for the voice and if it's if it feels different, if it feels special in a way, occupies a certain um, way of thinking about things in your mind is it is it uh... well I you know actually I think it's even though I really haven't written all that much vocal music I actually think it's a very good natural fit for me because I think I'm kind of lyrical by nature and you know one thing um, is that I think some of the contemporary songs that I've liked are still very vocal and their modernisms come in the what surrounds the voice. They, it comes in the uh, accompaniments, and and it really still preserves an essential singingness um, in the voice. And and that seemed to me, to, especially with this beautiful lyrical poem, a pretty easy fit for for me. And in general, just writing for the voice, I do think I you know I just still want to write melodies. I, I still want, I want, I mean, it's funny, I had just had a piano quartet of mine played, and um, after the rehearsal, the musicians who specialize in contemporary music and very edgy kind of stuff, they were walking around this apartment in New York, you know, where they were rehearsing it, singing tunes from my piece, 
and and you know some composers would be embarrassed by that. I loved it. <laughs> I was happy. If I ever get to hear myself in an elevator, it'll be okay. I actually heard myself in a men's room. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> at the Four Seasons, <laughs> that was I thought that was pretty good. So um, you know the idea of writing things, you know, writing melodies and and things that are because how much of the music that I love. I mean Schubert's my favorite composer, so maybe that tells you why it's natural for me to write for the voice. And I love, you know, obviously his songs, but I love his instrumental music, which is so clearly conditioned by his, you know, essential nature as a songwriter. So 